hello everyone hope you all are doing well so in this video we'll discuss the last problem of lead code weekly contest 358 a uh, hard level problem and a very good one to solve uh, it involves multiple concepts so yeah we'll discuss each one of them so the problem name is apply operations to maximize score so you are given an array nums of n positive integers and an integer k okay initially you start with with a score of one and you have to maximize your score by applying the following operations at most k times okay now what are those operations choose any non-empty sub array from l to r okay nums of l to r that you haven't chosen previously now choose an element x of this sub array with the highest prime score if multiple such elements exist choose the one with the smallest index okay multiply your score by x here, nums of L to R denotes the subarray of nums starting at index L and ending at the index R, both ends being inclusive. Okay. Now, what's the prime score? The prime score of an integer X is equal to the number of distinct prime factors of X. For example, the prime score of 300 is 3Y because 300 can be written as 2 into 2 into 3 into 5 into 5 means there are three distinct prime numbers. Return the maximum possible score after applying operation at most K of after at most k times and since the answer may be large return its its modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7 right big problem statement ultimately what it says is you are given an array every element in the array will have a prime score right now the prime score of an element is basically the number of distinct prime factors that it has okay for example 8 can be written as 2 into 2 into 2 so ultimately its score is 1 3 ka score is 1 because it can be written as 3 only. 9 ka score is 1 because 9 is written as 3 into 3. So only one distinct prime factor. Again, 3 ka score is 1, 2 ka score is 1. Okay. Suppose I have a number 12. What's the prime score of this? That since it can be written as 2 into 2 into 3. So the prime score is 2. Two distinct prime numbers, right? So every number has a prime score. Now we have to perform k operations. Okay. And in each operation, in each operation, choose a different subarray. Okay. Choose a different subarray right and in that sub array right in in that sub array choose the element with the maximum prime score okay and if there are multiple elements with the same prime score choose the one with the smallest index okay let's take this example this will become clear now as we saw every number has prime score of one right now what happens what the first element will choose now just see our aim is to maximize the answer that means we have to multiply by as large number as possible now here the largest number is 9 all right so i choose 9 right now what which sub array will i choose to have 9 i can choose only this one right now what are the other sub arrays i can choose so this is the first operation that in you started with one you multiplied with with my nine right now you have one more operation to perform so ideally i would want that in all the k operations i pick up the maximum element but right but that's not possible right but in this case can i pick nine again yes you can pick one more sub array that is this part nine and three now if you pick nine and three what happens its prime score is one its prime score is one so now what did we say if multiple elements have the same prime score pick the element with the minimum index right so we'll pick nine because that is on the left hand side of three now remember if you chose three and nine 3 and 9 so 3 would have been chosen because both have a prime score of 1 so you choose the element on the left hand side getting it so that means in both the operations I have a possibility to choose 9 so 9 into 9 is my answer that is 81 great 81 is my answer let's pick this one now the prime score of this one is 1 this is 2 2 2 2 and this is 2 yeah 18 is 2 into 3 into 3 2 distinct numbers 10 is 2 into 5 again 2 distinct prime numbers 14 is 2 into 7 6 is 2 into 3 so everyone is 2 except this 19 right now i can perform three operations let's choose so ideally i would want to choose the maximum number the maximum number is 19 so let's choose this sub array first okay only a single element right so done 1 into 19 into now i am left with two more operations so just see here all the numbers have the same prime score First thing, can I choose 19 again? No, because as soon as you include any other element, right? Remember, you cannot choose the same array multiple times. Sub array means starting index, ending index. So even if one of them is different, that means the sub array is different, right? So here we chose 0, 0. So sub array from element number 0 to element number 0. As soon as you include include 
even a single element what happens its prime score becomes 2 that means there is an element that i have included whose prime score is more than 1 that means i'll not be able choose to choose 19 again that's not at all possible right no worries so if that is not possible let's choose the second maximum element that is 18 right that is 18 so now if i choose 18 right if i choose 18 what happens this is the sub array that i'll have to choose right this is the sub array a single element sub array two operations done left with one more operation now there is no element on the right hand side of 18 right let's choose an element on the left hand side right? because i have to choose a different sub array now just see here what happens 10 also has a prime score of 2 18 also has a prime score of 2 if this prime score is same you choose the element on the left so you are bound to two, choose 10 right so that means 18 is not possible again let's choose the third maximum element then choose 14 so these are the three elements you multiply and your answer is 4 7 8 8 right that is what we have to do right in short if you choose an element like suppose this is the maximum element right so obviously one sub array is always there when you choose a single element so that many times you can take this element now the extra number of times you need to take this element will depend on that in how many sub arrays this guy acts as the um, element with the maximum prime score right now remember on the left hand side if i have to form if i have to include the elements on my left hand side their prime score should be less than this guy why because suppose the prime score of this guy is two so if the prime score of this guy is also two then that means if you include these two elements this will be chosen so that means on the left hand side i can only include elements which are which have prime score less than this current score however on the right hand side you can choose the elements which have the same prime score as well i mean less than or equals to because suppose there is an element with a prime score 2 here so if you choose these two elements in a single sub array this element will be chosen right ultimately what i have to do i have to find the number of sub arrays where i can choose a particular element as the uh, you know as my answer right that means how many sub arrays are there in which i get the current element as the what do you call it uh, prime score right prime score that's what i have to do so that's what i have to do uh, the, num the number of elements i can have is 10 raised to power 5 and each element can be 10 raised to power 5 also the number of operations can go up to 10 raised to power 9 and so on right simple so first step the first step here is obviously for every number we have to find how many distinct prime factors are there right so i hope everyone is comfortable with sieve right I'll, I'll not go into too much detail of sieve because this is not a video related to sieve algorithm but this is the function right i have taken two arrays right I'll, I'll i'll go with the intuition part don't worry but i'm going step by step that seeing the problem statement that is sure shot that i have to calculate the number of distinct prime factors for for each and every number right so sieve of eratosthenes is, is a good algorithm right where we can find how many sieve uh sorry how many what are the prime numbers and for each prime number how many distinct factors are there right so just see what i do i take an array is prime which tells me whether the current number is prime number or not and prime score that will tell me for every element how many distinct prime factors are there right so for zero and one they are not prime numbers great i goes from two i less than limit now limit is 10 raised to power 5 uh, plus one because the numbers can go up to 10 raised to power 5 right now if the current number is prime that means this number is prime right so see basic sieve of eratosthenes you start from i you go to limit j plus equals to i increment the prime score of this j why you increment the prime score because this is a prime number right the current ith number is a prime number and all the multiples of i right all the multiples of i will have the current ith number as a prime factor so all the mult for all the multiples increment the count of prime score right and also those uh, mark those numbers as false that means no those are not prime numbers right so this step is not there in sieve of eratosthenes this is the only step that we had right right this is the only step we had and we are good to go got it first step done now this is done now comes the question that how do we choose the sub arrays so that um, i'm able to get the maximum number every time right so this is done now what we'll do consider a generic case this is my sub array this is the maximum element the position of the maximum element right now what i have to do on the left hand side i can extend uh, let's find how many sub arrays are there which will have this as the prominent element right how we can choose that suppose the score prime score of this number is two so move on the left hand side and see that how many numbers can move till you are finding numbers whose prime score is less than two 
right? Because if that is equals to two, you cannot include that. If you include that, na, this element will be uh, used for multiplication, right? So on the left hand side, just see how much, how how far you can go. Similarly, on the right hand side, just see how far you can go. The only difference is on the right hand side, you'll check for scores that are le less than equals to two, and here which are less than two. Simple. Include indices where the score is less than two. Include indices which where score is either two or less than two. Simple. How to do that? We can use a you know monotonic stack wala concept here. All right. Simple. We are going step by step. First, find the prime score. Second, find the left and the right bound. That okay. These are the elements I can include. So a subarray is represented uh, represented by a you uh, you know by start index and end index, right? So if I have to include this element. Okay, and I can include these elements as well. The uh, the scores of these elements are less than two. It is two, and the scores of these elements are suppose greater than sorry less than equals to two. That means it, how many subarrays can I form? Just see. So a subarray is uniquely represented by a starting and an ending index, right? So these are the possible starting points, right? Why these are the possible starting points of the subarray? Because Remember, if a subarray starts from here, obviously you cannot include this element, right? I have to see in how many subarrays this element is included, right? Where this gives me the multiplic multiplicative factor, right? These are the starting points. What are the ending points? These are the ending points, right? These are the starting points. These are the ending points. Just multiply them. If you multiply them, you'll get the number of subarrays which you can form, or rather, which you can choose. That whenever you choose it, this is the element you will get. To multiply it in your answer, simple. Now comes the question: How do we calculate this part? Simple, monotonic stack, right? Monotonic stack. The concept will be that okay. The, the basic concept of monotonic stack is like this, right? So suppose I have to find the um, this is an element, right? I have to find the nearest element on my left hand side, which is smaller than me. Suppose I have to find it, right? So just see one thing: if this is the array. You have an element five here. You have an element eight here, and I have to find the uh, what do you call it answer for this guy. That means on the left hand side, which is the nearest element, which is less than this element, right? Now just see here. This is eight. This is five. If a smaller element is present here, obviously on the left hand side there is no need to have any large elements, right? Why? Because if this element is ten, right? If this element is ten, its answer will be five and not eight because there is a smaller element on the right hand side itself, right? This is how you you basically form monotonic stack, right? You can you can refer any resource to find it, but so basically that's what we are doing. We'll form a monotonic stack for left side, for right side, and then we'll just calculate the number of subarrays that we can form, right? I'm not going into depth of each and everything because this question involves multiple concept, multiple individual concept, and if we go into depth of even a single concept, that will take probably fifteen twenty minutes. So <laughs> it will be sort of a forty five minute video. So you should be familiar familiar with these concepts, right? So let's first show you. Let me first show you the code, and this will become very easy, right? Just see, this is the main function. This is the number of elements I have. I first call the Cv algorithm. See what Cv algorithm will do for every element. It will tell me that okay, this is the prime score for every element, right? Now, I use the monotonic stack concept to find that for every element, what is the nearest element whose prime score is greater than me, and on the right hand side, right? Because if I'm standing here and if this is the first element on my right hand side whose prime score is greater than me, that means these elements can be included in the subarray. Similarly, on the left hand side, if this is the first element on my left hand side whose score is greater than, right, greater than or equal to uh, prime score uh, of me, then I can include these elements. So that's what I have done here. Right, greater. So you start from the right hand side while your stack is not empty and prime score of the current element. If that is greater than or equals to prime score of the element at the at the top, right? Then what you do? You just pop the element. Why you pop the element? Just see. Again, let's see. There is an element. Suppose uh, twelve. There is an element. Suppose uh, let's take any element. Suppose twenty. Okay. Now just see here. Two distinct prime factors, and this guy has two distinct prime factors, right? So what I mean to say, if I have twelve here, can I include twenty? Yes. Can I include twenty? Yes. Can I include twenty-two? Yes, maybe. But if you choose a larger value, right? If you choose a choose a value whose prime score is suppose three, then this is the first position on on its right hand side which cannot be included. So all these indices will be considered. So you just 
pop it you just pop it because no this will be my answer getting it that's what we are doing prime of so while the current number ka prime score is greater than the prime score of top element you keep on popping it that means no this is not my answer i need to right hand side i need to move right hand side right simple now what's the uh, value for the current element if if your stack is empty that means you do not have an element and you place n that means for this element i can include all the elements on the right hand side okay so when i have to form calculate the number of sub arrays these all elements can act as the ending elements right so if stack is empty n else s dot peak s dot push of i push the current index right concept of monotonic stack similarly i do it for the left hand side also just see the equal to is missing because here i can include the elements whose prime score is equals and they are on the right hand side but on the left hand side i have cannot include the elements whose prime score is equals okay long answer is equals to 0 now these are some tuples that i'll form right because i have to sort the numbers i have to pick the maximum number at every step right so what i'll do uh, form pairs uh, this is the current element this is the index right just sort them sort them so that the maximum element is present at the uh, at the first position right sort them in reverse direction now start traversing the elements right this is the current index pairs dot get of i got value and this is the value of that number right <laughs> now how many sub arrays uh, are there which will provide you this value as the answer just see current index right this is the array this is the largest element this is the current index minus left greater or equal of current index so in this array i'll have the index of the element closest element on its left whose prime score is greater than or equals to means you can include these elements right so current minus this into on right hand side you'll have this element so current gr right greater of current index minus current index right how many sub arrays you can form these values into these values that's what i have done here current index minus left greater and right into right greater minus current index right this is these are the sub arrays but actually how many sub arrays do i need or actually how many times do i need to multiply that will be minimum of the number of operations that i need to perform and the sub arrays i have right the sub arrays i can have for this number right because i have to find the contribution of this number so suppose i have to perform 10 operations but this element comes in 100 sub arrays so i'll obviously uh, you know multiply it only 10 times right so that's why the number of operations is math dot min of sub array count right comma k right now there is a function which calculates x raised to y mod n mod m something right because suppose there is a value 19 you have to multiply it five times so you have to do 19 into 19 into 19 right so 19 raised to 5 mod something this is the function right so whatever is your answer just multiply it take the mod take the mod properly so that you do not face any overflows right now k equals to k minus operations because you have performed these number of operations now after performing these operations the moment your k becomes equals to 0 that means now you do not have to perform any operation just break the loop and return the answer that's it again just to reiterate this question involves multiple concept first sieve algorithm second during sieve algorithm calculate the number of prime factors each number has third x raised to power y mod m that's the third thing this is the basic function of how to calculate x raised to y okay the fourth concept monotonic stack right so these are some of the concepts involved i would say this is a very beautiful question uh, if you are aware of these concepts it will become easy otherwise this question will provide you a number of new concepts to learn right so yeah that's it that's it for the solution i have to i have tried to make this video short not too long because i know it's very tedious to watch long videos so <laughs> that's why so you can go to separate videos to watch these individual concepts right i have to try i have tried my best to explain you briefly i have not uh, because my aim was not to create a very long video rather a short video which tells you in a crisp way that okay this is the approach for the solution right got it so yeah that's it for the solution i hope you learn something new from this video do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well in case you have any issues related to this solution mention that in the comment section i'll leave out on each one of them thank you take care bye bye